starting for the new week of CNN 10, World News Explained Objectively in 10 Minutes. My name is Carl Azus. How long is the question being asked by workers, students, politicians, and business leaders around the world with so many places shut down? According to Johns Hopkins University, there were more than 684,000 cases of coronavirus worldwide when we produced this show. Most who have the disease are expected to recover, though more than 32,000 people have died from it so far. The United States now has the most cases of any country, with roughly 125,000 people who've caught the disease. More than two-thirds of America's population has been told to stay home to prevent COVID-19 from spreading. The cases are not spread evenly across America, though. More than 40% of them are in New York, by far the hardest-hit state. That's why on Saturday, the U.S. Centers for Disease Control told people in New York and in two neighboring states, Connecticut and New Jersey, not to travel to other states. But there are places like the Dakotas, Montana, Nebraska, and West Virginia that have reported fewer than 200 cases each. So an American health official says the Trump administration is trying to find a balance between keeping the country shut down and reopening it entirely. This could mean that some schools and businesses where there aren't a lot of coronavirus cases may reopen in the weeks ahead. Of course, New York is not part of that. The U.S. government has given the green light for four new emergency hospitals to be built there. It's also working to get more ventilators, machines that help hospital patients breathe, built and distributed. Companies like New Balance are working to make more facial masks. Delta Airlines is giving free flights to medical workers heading for coronavirus-stricken areas. Some small businesses, the ones you'll find on Main Street, are coming up with creative ideas to serve customers while they and others wait for financial help from a $2 trillion stimulus bill that President Donald Trump signed on Friday. Behind the forced closure of each door on one short block of stores is a story about the small businesses that employ half of America's private workforce. I mean, when you put everything into watching something grow and then it stops suddenly, I was sitting on the floor just sobbing. Jen Yates and Alex Hartunian own fitness center Studio Metamorphosis. We scrounged every single dollar, every penny to open and um, we did it. How are we going to survive with, like, we're going to wake up the next morning and have zero income. Like, mm -hmm. how does that work, you know? Small businesses like Studio Metamorphosis are due to receive close to the 400 billion earmarked in the $2 trillion government stimulus plan. Good. Nice, Melissa. Excellent form. But as business owners wait for that financial relief. Good job, Pam. She's doing it sans waves. They're trying to stay connected to customers. Yates holding free virtual workout classes, making no money. 10 second trivia. The flag of Cambodia is the only one in the world with what feature? Dragon, famous building, trident, or religious symbol? Cambodia's flag is the only one with a specific building, an ancient temple named Angkor Wat. It's also one of the nations served by a man who became a CNN hero back in 2017. And he's among those heroes who are in the spotlight again because they're expanding the work they do to help treat or prevent coronavirus. We've reported on the heroic efforts of healthcare workers and grocery store workers. Today, here's a look at some former CNN heroes who are in the fight. As COVID-19 continues to spread, so do the efforts of people who bring us hope and inspiration. These CNN heroes are on the front lines of the pandemic, bringing medical care and supplies to those in need. I'm proud of you, man. This is good stuff. Rob Gore is the founder of Kavi, a nonprofit that focuses on violence prevention. But in his day job, he's an ER doctor at a Brooklyn, New York hospital. He's at the epicenter of the fight against the virus in the U.S., putting his life on the line daily to save others. I've worked in disaster zones in the past. I worked in post-earthquake Haiti, I've worked in South America, I've worked in East Africa, and this feels like it's a, a culmination of, of all of them. Not in the sense that you see widespread tragedy, but the issues regarding resources and access to care, issues regarding just fear. I have never been a part of a pandemic. 
I noticed a series of tents in front of the different hospitals. And in any kind of disaster situation, you have to think about where patients are gonna go. So you think about overflow, but also you wanna ensure that those infections don't get spread within a hospital setting. Right now, I am not staying at home. My wife is at home. I do recognize that I'm around sick people a lot, but I don't want to bring anything home. So we're actually staying at an Airbnb not too far from where I live. If you aren't a healthcare professional or work at a place that's essential for survivability of people in your city, in your town, stay home. Use these times while we're self-quarantining to reflect and find out what it is that's important to you. Jim Withers brings medical care to people experiencing homelessness in Pittsburgh. Safety net, anybody home? More than half a million Americans are living on the streets and have nowhere safe to shelter during this crisis. So there's the guy up at Bates that was coughing. Dr. Withers and his team have quickly mobilized, leading the city's efforts to try to make sure this vulnerable community is being served. We're very concerned about the people that we have out here on the streets that they may be at higher risk in some ways for the COVID infection that's coming. So we've made a concerted effort right now to develop new policies and procedures to be able to screen people for the COVID virus. So we're still figuring this out as we go. We do have testing kits. We're also giving out uh, soap and jugs of water. And a sleeping bag, should we need to put someone in isolation so they can hopefully at least not transmit it to other people? I think it's really important in these times to remember that we're all in this together. These are our brothers and sisters out here. Hopefully, the lessons that we learned here of being together and taking care of each other will last far beyond this COVID epidemic. Hand washing has now become a critical prevention tool. Oh, very good, very good, yes. But Samir Lakani has known for years how life-saving this simple task can be. He's dedicated his life to providing recycled hotel soap to rural communities across the world. To help battle this pandemic, he's trying to make sure soap gets into as many hands as possible. All of a sudden, we have woken up to a new reality where everyone is talking about hand washing with soap. In some parts of the world, only 1% of households have access to soap for hand washing. In the last two and a half months, we have provided over 375,000 bars of soap to people in affected countries. And also, we are on track, should this virus still persist, to reach 2.5 million people by the end of this year. All of a sudden, I feel a certain sense of closeness to the people in my community, but also to people around the world. It is as if the color of our skin and our boundaries have just dissipated and dissolved in front of our eyes. The disappearing of boundaries, inspiring acts of selflessness and unwavering courage from everyday heroes, reminding us all that we're not in this alone. Here's a video worth 10 out of 10. The Georgia Aquarium is among many places that are closed to the public, but that doesn't include puppies. And they're not there to feed the fish, if you know what I'm saying. The Atlanta Humane Society recently took a couple adoptable puppies for a play date near some of the world's largest fish tanks. Was it cute? Yes. Were they interested in the marine animals? Not particularly. Though they're still just guppies. I mean puppies. But maybe later on downstream, they'll get interested in dogfish. Doberman Perchers, Shark Pays, Amberjack Russells, Bass Hounds, Poor Beagles, or Bulldog Sharks. I'm Carl Azuz, Ranburn High School in Ranburn, Alabama. Thank you for requesting a mention on our official YouTube channel. We are posting all kinds of explainers on all kinds of topics there, so please be sure to subscribe to youtube.com slash CNN10.